A KRFO interview with a promoter for the O-Town Throwdown 2, Ben Fearson. Uh, happy to have you on again this year to talk about this big event that's coming up in Owatonna. And I think back to last year, Ben, and it sure seemed like it was a really successful event, a, a fun, neat activity uh, for people to take in at Four Seasons. It was. You know, it ended up being uh, one of, if not our uh, driller promotions, biggest show of the year as far as uh, fan attendance anyway. So it was uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fights. It took a little bit longer than we than we uh, usually do with the show. I think the fights went for a good five hours, but, you know, we wanted to make sure Owatonna had it. They've had, Owatonna's kind of gotten cheated a few times with some past promoters with them only having a couple of fights. So we wanted to make sure they got their, got their money's worth that night. And, and I feel like they did. Well, I, I, I would agree, and the, the fan reaction seemed to indicate that as well. Is this year's show very similar to last year's? And just tell me about this year's show for Saturday night. I think so. I think, you know, the one thing we don't have this year, we had that tournament last year, kind of, it's called a Grand Prix tournament where guys fight multiple times in, in one night. We're not, not doing that. There was, logistically, that's a very tough thing. You know, you lose guys, and then, then the tournament gets thrown off, and you have it bracketed by you know, who you think is the favorite and whatnot. So we don't have that this time, but we do. I think we're actually, we just lost another fight uh, due to injury, but we're, we're down to 17 fights. It's still sure. way more fights than we need. I mean, it's, you know, a normal normal MMA event is right around 10. So we, like I said, we always try to give Oatana uh, their money's worth, and I think they'll get that again on, on uh, Saturday. And there are a number of guys that either do or have called Oatana home to bring in that local spin as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, the main event is Travis View, and he's he's fighting a fight that people have talked about in Minnesota for years and years because they're two guys that have been around forever. He's fighting Kevin Asplund, kind of uh, as far as heavyweights go in Minnesota, the hardest hitting heavyweight we've hmm. got uh, in Minnesota. You know, I, I suspect Travis will be able to take him down, and, and down there, Travis has the advantage on the feet. Kevin Asplund definitely has the advantage. So. It'll be an interesting main event, and yeah, Travis is a Owatonna guy now coaching over in Casson, so uh, lots of local ties there. And then Richard Rodriguez would be the other, you know, former Owatonna wrestler. He is fighting for the 135 pound title that night. You know, Richard is seven and zero, and his opponent is seven and one. His opponent is Chad Brito from Wisconsin, and he also is an outstanding wrestler. So uh, it should be it'll be interesting because uh, you know I don't anticipate either guy being able to take the other one down hmm. so I, I think you'll see two wrestlers having to stand up possibly for five rounds and and that usually makes for a great fight uh, those are the two big local ones danielle williams was on the card but he has suffered a back injury and he will not be fighting on saturday uh he's he's laid up here for a few weeks with the with the it sounded like basically a pinched nerve and, and some vertebrae damage in his back. Not not career ending, but essentially, you know, doctors told him six weeks of not doing anything. So that that kind of knocked him out of this fight. It's too bad because it was, you know, he was supposed to fight Ron Winslow, a guy that would actually stand up with with Danielle, and not okay. not try to take him down all the time. Uh, and it's a win that you know I really could have put Danielle, you know, into that national scene of MMA. So. Hopefully he can get healthy, and, and before the end of the year, we, we get him that big shot, but he won't be able to fight on Saturday. So those, those are the two, you know, Richard and, and Travis are the two big local ones. But there's lots of, you know, the best story always is, is David Selner. <laughs> or he's, he's in his 50s, and uh, if, I, if I was as cut up as he is right now, and I'm 37, I would feel very good about myself. That guy is he's, he's in as good a shape as anybody, and he's, I think he's 52, and uh, he's already said this will be his his last fight, but he's fighting uh, a guy by the name of Sam Com on Saturday. I think it's I think it's a very good matchup. Should be a very good fight. But boy, it's hard not to respect Dave Selner getting in there and doing that into his fifties. So uh, you know that'll be a fun one. Jay Paulson is another Owatonna guy on the card. Uh, there's a lot of Albert Lee guys on the mm. card. A couple uh, former Albert Lee wrestlers on the card. So yeah, there's there's plenty of local local angles and. and you know, one that I should definitely mention before, just because I think it's a female fighter who I think we'll see in the UFC within a year or two, Jessica Fresh. She's going to be fighting for the 120-pound title that night uh, against Sarah Jacobson. 
And Jessica Fresh is a legitimate, legitimate female wrestler. I mean, you'll you'll notice it immediately. Her her level changes are on par with uh, some of the great high school wrestlers you and I cover, Roy. Mm-hmm. And you'll you'll be impressed by her. She's like I said, she's one I would be stunned if she wasn't fighting in a national promotion within a year. She's she's that good. She's still an amateur right now, so it's a it's kind of a cool chance to come see one someone who is right at the beginning of their career who I, I think truly has the potential to fight at that next level. To backtrack to David Selner for a moment, the, the gentleman who's in his uh, 50s and still fighting, uh, do you know a lot about his background and how long he's been uh, this kind of an athlete in MMA? Uh, you know, he was around when I, you know, I moved to Rochester in 2006, and he, you know, he was kind of around the scene then, and, okay. you know, I think he's, this will this will be, I want to say his third fight, and his son fights too, um, so they're, you know, they've been around the sort just the most respectful guy you could ever meet. You know, I, I, I would miss it if he wasn't. He comes to our other shows, too. I think he's just a true true fan of the sport, and I think he's one of those guys that that uh, just loves the challenge and, and uh, the physicalness uh, of staying competitive at that age. I mean, like I said, hats off to him. I, I, I can't do it right now, what he's doing at 52 years old. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to see him in there with a, another chance to get a win. He did win his first ever fight. You know that was that was years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, probably, I want to say like 2009 ish. Okay. So I mean, he's been around for about five years, not not active for five years. You know, I think he fights when when there's kind of a cool opportunity in his, in his hometown like this. But you know, as professional and respectful a guy as as I work with, so I'm I'm excited to see him on Saturday. Talking to Ben Fearson, uh, helping to promote the Driller Promotions presentation of O-Town Throwdown 2 this Saturday night, Four Seasons Center in Owatonna. How about uh, schedule, ticket information, uh, that sort of uh, detail, Ben? Yeah, tickets are, you can get them online. Otherwise, you know, the best way always to get tickets is to find someone who's fighting on the card. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these guys, that's how they make their money while they're fighting locally. You know, I I did a story with Travis for the the Post Bulletin in Rochester, Travis View, and, you know, he kind of, he went into some detail on that. You know, it's, when you, if you're not fighting at the national level, when you're fighting in Minnesota or, you know, or one of the smaller shows, you're not getting paid very much to do this. So, um, these promotions, they give them a percentage of every single ticket they sell. So uh, there is an opportunity for them to make good money, like, you know, Travis last time. You know, he made a couple thousand dollars on his ticket sales. You know, so that, that gets him back up to what, what he would have been paid fighting for a huge promotion. So mm-hmm. the best way always to get tickets is find the local fighter because they get to keep some of that money. And that's that's the best way to show them support. So you can do that. You can also go online. It's called cagetix.com. T-I-X at the end, and uh, click on O-Town Throwdown 2, mm-hmm. and you can pick your favorite fighter, and they still get their percentage, so you don't even have to go go hunt down Travis. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can do it online and click his name, and he still gets his percentage of the ticket sale. So uh, and there will be tickets available at the door as well. You know, it's, it's, a, it's such, an awesome, such an awesome venue for fights. Mm-hmm. It's huge, and, and uh, there's really not a bad seat in there for, for watching this. But uh, there will definitely be some tickets at the door. You know, the only thing that would be in jeopardy of selling out would be kind of the high end, the higher price ones. But there will be plenty of general admission tickets left. Uh, and as far as schedule, doors open at five on Saturday. We're going to try to start fights. It will probably, you know, we're scheduled to start around five thirty. I think it'll be pretty close to that. With that many fights, we need to need to keep the schedule. We don't we don't want to keep people there for five six hours like we had to do last time with so many fights. So. We'll try to zip it along pretty quick. I would say if, if you want to see guys uh, early in the car at 530, you better be there by 530 or you're not going not gonna to see some of those first fights. So. And it, and we know there's a lot of people that are familiar with MMA, and there was a big crowd there last year, but someone who is not familiar with this activity, this sport, what are they going to see? Action, I guess, would be the best way to, <laughs> best way to describe it. It's kind of it's funny because, you know, the people who don't know it, I think it's this barbaric, uh, no holds barred, everything. Whereas in reality, it's the most regulated sport in the state of Minnesota. We are, you know, Driller Promotions is regulated. The state government regulates us. Like mm-hmm. they're the ones overseeing the event. They they charge us a lot of money to oversee the event. But all the officials you'll see everywhere are state officials. You know, they're paid by the state of Minnesota to regulate the sport. So every aspect of everything you see is overseen by the government now. And, 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 you know, it's a pain, but it it ensures that 
the safety of the fighters. You know, they make it's obviously it's a dangerous sport. It's a very physical contact sport that that uh, you know always is a risk for injury. But having the state regulate it and make sure there's plenty of medical staff and the proper medical staff mm-hmm. and all that stuff there. You know, every fighter that gets in the cage has done more medical testing than you want to know. I mean, they have to do blood work, eye exam, physical, neurological exam, and they have to do those four things every single year. You know, it's not just a one and done type thing. They got to do all that stuff every year, but it's all it's all in the name of safety. But as far as the sport goes, you know, MMA is something that combines basically every martial art that you've you've ever seen. And you know, wrestlers do very well because a wrestler gets to decide where the fight's going to take place. You know, if if he wants it to be on the ground or if he wants it standing, a, a good wrestler is going to be able to determine that. So, you know, I, it's for me as a wrestling guy, it's been awesome. It's been awesome to see. You know these kids that we cover in high school go on to do well at, at a professional sport. You know, so it's been, you know, like a kid like Chad Curry I covered him in, in high school wrestling, and now getting to see him do well. And he's he's a kid who his next fight I think will be at the, you know whether it's Bellator or RFA or UFC whatever he'll mm-hmm. his next fight will be on that that big stage. So it's exciting. It's cool to see you know kids kids like you know Roy. You and I have covered these kids since they're 13, 14 years old, and now we get to see them do well in a professional sport. It's kind of just a cool deal all around. Well, it's very exciting. It's a, an adrenaline rush, no doubt about it, from a fan standpoint, too, just to, to watch as those battles unfold. Uh, 5 o'clock doors open, 5.30. Action begins on Saturday night, Cage Ticks. Dot com, T-I-X, CageTix.com, at the Four Seasons in Owatonna, O-Town, Throwdown 2. Anything else to cap it off, Ben? No, I think that's perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Like I said, last year it was our biggest show, our wildest crowd. Mm-hmm. Be a little bit too wild. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we have four times the police presence this year just to make sure nobody gets out of control. So uh, we're, uh, we're well prepared this year. Maybe I think, honestly, last year was so, we didn't know how many people were going to show up. You know, I, like I said, Owatonna had been kind of mistreated by a previous promoter with mm-hmm. what they were promising. So, you know, we put together the best fight card we could and did everything we could right. But we, you know, ticket sales weren't great until the day of. <laughs> we had a huge walk-up crowd. I think they were waiting to see if we were going to cancel or what we were doing. So wow. I don't blame them, you know, with the, the past. So I, I think uh, I think we'll... we'll Probably see the same awesome crowd we had last time, or I hope so anyway. I think it'll, I think it'll be a fun night. All right. Well, it, it was a real neat event. So if someone uh, is unsure about it, go give it a try. It's a real neat event. O Town Throwdown 2. Chatting here with Ben Fearson, uh, who helps promote it. Uh, Driller Promotions helping to run that event uh, this Saturday night in Owatonna, the 18th, April 18th. Ben, thank you for the time. Yep. Thank you, Right.